you know, if you disturb the soil too much, you take away the ground cover. You're definitely gonna save a lot on certain inputs and mainly tractor use and diesel consumption. We also pay attention to the types of you know, products that we use because you know, we don't want anything affecting it in a negative way. Nature doesn't come in and plow the ground. Conventional tillage and farming does. It's breaking down the biology of the soil. We try to minimize soil disturbance because for one is we don't want to disrupt the life cycles of the soil microbes. One of the most important ones is soil fungi because they grow with the hyphae and so when you disturb the soil with a disc or a plow, uh, you're going to cut those hyphae and disrupt their life cycle. Uh, another reason why we want to not disturb the soil as much is to maintain the soil aggregate stability. We try to avoid soil tillage is because it breaks down the soil aggregates and it decreases the stability of those aggregates over time. Take a field that you till, you're breaking up that aggregate and you have just really a sterile field. You have no soil biology. Every time you plow that ground, you're basically burning down your house, if you will. With no till, you're keeping that ground intact. You're keeping that environment for your microbes and and bacteria and fungi. That's the main reason for doing it, building the soil biology. If I can get grass to grow there first and it gets established, that kind of doesn't leave much room for anything else to compete as easily. I like to only see my tractor out here for the first time when we're trying to jumpstart and revitalize and regenerate good production out of the brush again because it's been stale, stagnant, overgrazed, you name it. After that, I really don't want to see my big equipment out here. I'd rather have my smaller equipment, for example, as a skid steer, and I will grub up. I'll kind of tackle those as they come before it becomes a problem or it gets out of control. We don't just want to not give them dewormer for health, human health reasons, but for the soil. Because if you're giving an animal a dewormer, typically ivermectin, that is going through their system and coming out in their manure. So when that manure hits the ground, any invertebrate that is in that area of soil is also killed by the ivermectin. And so you're literally killing the biology in the soil that you're trying to promote if you're deworming your animals. We use drip irrigation to, to water all of our crops. Because we are using drip tape, we've installed a venturi fertigation system that gives us the ability to run liquid fertilizer solutions through the drip tape so we can give plants the nutrients they need at the exact moment that they need, or it minimizes the possibility of leaching into the soil beyond the farm, into waterways beyond the farm. So it allows us to be more specific with the amount of nutrients that we're actually feeding the plants saving us time, saving us money, because this whole thing can essentially be automated. You plow the ground, you have a fresh, clean field. You don't have any weed. But guess what you've also done? You've also planted all those weed seeds. We have built up weed seed banks on all of our fields, whether we want them or not. You're either gonna plant them when you're tilling, and they're gonna come up, and then you gotta plow them or spray them or kill them. One thing I've seen with my operation is I don't have near the weed pressure I ever had. And I think a big deal of it is, is I'm not planting the weed seeds. I would say we're probably using a third of the diesel and half the tractor hours. Now then, the only time that we're running the tractor is either when we're planting our cover crop, planting the crop, or spraying it, or harvesting. Our time sitting in a tractor seed is probably half what it used to be during conventional tillage. If you can save that money of the diesel and the wear and tear on your equipment, plus increase your yield also, it has to be a win-win if you can get all the little particulars figured out along the way. I think in the future, we're gonna see more and more people going to this method. One of the more ironic things about nature preserves and, and the intention behind nature preserves is, is wonderful. You know, it's like, okay, we have been doing negative impact on this land. Let's take all of that impact away and let's let it rest. Let's let it, let's let it do its thing. But the thing is, the thing that it should be doing needs the properly managed grazing impact. That's one of the great messages that we want to get across to people. It's like, these grasses, 
literally need to be grazed to survive. If they are not grazed, they will end up overshading themselves and they will kill themselves. Thank you.